Hello everyone, this is Simon from writtenlegalenglish.com and welcome to week 33 where we're going to have a look at a quiz, a plain language and grammar quiz. Everyone likes quizzes, don't they? And they are that much better when they involve two of the best things in the world, plain language and grammar. But just before we have a look at the rules for the quiz this week, in case you're new to me, my channel or my videos, then I'd like to just introduce you to the content that I put out every single week. So today on Tuesdays, I put out a text for you to think about from the point of view of plain language this week and next week we'll be doing some quizzes. So a, li a little bit of a break from the norm for this week and next week, but normally I give you a text to have a look at. In fact, have a look at my previous videos and you'll see the kind of things that I do. On Wednesday, tomorrow, I'll put out, I'll put out a video from my a professional English writing course which will identify a writing error, explain why it is a writing error and give you the opportunity to practice your skills so you don't make that error in your writing. And then on Friday I come back and have a look at the texts that I've asked you to have a look at on Friday. And this Friday I'll be giving you the answers to part one of this plain language and grammar quiz. Okay, so there are two rules to this quiz. The first one's easy peasy. I'd like you to read each text and identify the error. The harder part is to give that error a name because every single sentence will have either a grammar error or a plain language error and each error has a name and by giving that error a name we then become that much more aware of that error not just in the quiz but in our own writing. So it's important to say not just that it's wrong but give it a name and then we begin to understand why it's wrong. Then it stays in here a little bit better and that way we avoid that mistake. Okay, now I know I'm keeping you on tenter hooks, but there's just one final thing to say and that is on Friday, I shall tell you where I found these sentences. This, these are sentences from one of my favorite sources, uh, a source that I use time and time again with the people that I work with just to remind them these are errors, there are plain language errors and grammar errors and to be aware of these errors and hopefully now you will be too. So let's show you finally what these sentences are, the quiz for this week. Okay, so these are the four sentences. The election law provides that a proceeding may be instituted by a candidate or voter to contest the casting or, the, or canvassing of challenged ballots. Set forth below is a summary and an analysis of the case law concerning anticipation and obviousness of these patent claims. The Jones's house is quite spacious and the patentee must show that the established royalty rate was artificially low because of the factors such as widespread infringement that the patient lacked public recognition or to avoid patent challenges. Now, I'm sure you're reading those sentences and you're probably thinking, what's wrong with those sentences? But trust me, there is an error in every single one. So put your thinking caps on and I'll see you again on Friday as I go through these sentences one by one and identify those errors.